Hi all, welcome to another King's Crusher Banter Blitz Sunday, 12.30 p.m. at Chess 24. Okay, I'm just going to mute over here. I've got my window open for the birds tweeting. It's quite a humid day at the moment. It's a bit muggy, humid in, in London. Okay, I'm going to take the challenges from the first come, first serve basis model. If I can avoid the... Uh, okay. The commutator. Hi. <clears throat> the commutator. I mean, com commutative is some mathematical property, isn't it? Uh, okay, so let's see. Commutator. Can I play the Sicilian Dragon in this first game? Is he going to dare castle queenside against me? Yeah, he dares to go into this line. I'm going to play quick d5. I have some strange fetish for d5. I don't know what's caused this fetish. Um, sometimes I have some fun games from this position. Oh, I can take that pawn. That's not fairy. <clears throat> Okay, nice centre pawn to take. Opening up the dragon bishop along the diagonal. Now I think h5 is played to try and slow down the ripping open of the h file. This is a very violent opening. One of the most violent, I believe, in chess. Got to be careful, even after I've won this pawn. I don't want to be hacked to death. Getting ready with resources like rook h8. If he took g4 rook h8 maybe and encourage g5 knight e8 as long as i don't drop d5 this should be okay right <clears throat> e5 i can encourage knight takes to strengthen my center open up that b file i don't like losing dragon bishop but that's life <clears throat> uh, it's lost it's gone it's a distant memory all it's uh Left is these the remnants, the dark square weaknesses of the Fincetto. Gone. Okay. Nevertheless, there's still a B file if he takes here. There's still D4 if I've got my center pawn. I can play D4, right? Now, what do I do here? Do I play takes? I'm wondering. Knight takes? I'm wondering G4 might have some venom later. That's kind of blocking in his G4 and G takes. If I open up the bishop, then G4 is actually more effective. So I wonder if I play knight D5 here. I can always go into E3. That looks pretty tasty. He's going to E3 actually. Tempted by this now. Now G4 I can answer with rook H8 without having the impact of this bishop so much because of that pawn on f3 so yeah in a way i think that's helping why it's also opening up that f file so here i think i can keep things pretty stable with this i hope now if he takes an f4 maybe i've got rook takes h4 there Yeah, so by not taking some, there's a GM on YouTube which says to take is a mistake. So I think that might have improved the opponent's position in two ways: opening up the F file and making the bishop more dangerous for supporting G takes H5. So here, yeah, I think it's good news so far. Knight E3 seems to fork rook and bishop. Looking out for tactics, Queen takes. I don't think it's on. I've got my queen protected by knight and rook. So am I forking the Rook and Bishop? I guess he'll give up the exchange here or try something violent. Now, I am attacking that Bishop though. So no Knight G5, I think I'll just take the Bishop. If the Bishop moves, Knight takes D1, probably followed, might be tempted to play HG then and Bishop takes G4. No, I don't believe that. I do not believe this. I cannot believe it. I'm taking it. Now there is knight e6 if the bishop wasn't here. But fortunately, fortunately, I do have a bishop on c8 here. So let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> I 
All right, can I take on g4? Now, I don't want to get at all complacent about this position. There aren't many pitfalls in chess. And one of the causes is complacency, especially in winning positions, or what you think is winning. So I want to make sure that, especially this knight, and my rooks, if they get connected, I'll have more confidence. I'm not going to... Rook g1, bishop h5, knight e6. This is an example of a disaster scenario. But, yeah, rook g1, rook h4, you can create that disaster with rook takes. And then knight e6. So I've got to be wary about this knight e6. Let's put the bishop here, covering e6. And I want to play queen e7 just to get out of this theoretical fork scenario. Alright, he's got queen f5 if. Yeah, not yet because knight takes. So can I play this? Or maybe queen f6. Is tighter to hold f5. So I want to hold f5 under theoretical conditions like rook e3, queen f5. It's not happening really. I'm just trying to make sure, get rid of these awkward configurations for my position. This, that's holding the bishop. Now I'm wondering. If B6, knight take, uh, knight here, bishop takes, I'm on the queen. Simplify, just simplify with B6, potentially. Hmm. B6. I mean, that's what I want to do. I'm not sure beyond that. Okay, can I take here? My plan is simply b6. Right, it's things are getting violent now. Can I not just take that or do I take on g5? What's the danger here? I'm thinking to I'm not sure. I'm going to take the knight. <clears throat> now, if I play knight d4. Okay, thanks for the game, uh, commentator. C, Saba. Okay. E4. E4. I've been playing E3 a bit this week for fun. Uh, getting some good games out of E3. Uh, but uh, E4 is more. Um, adventurous and aggressive in a way. Right. If I stop this B5 stuff, and there was a, a game which um, this reminds me of um, Nigel Short playing white against John Spillman, where Spillman played in some sort of hyper modern way and got smashed in about 20 moves. I remember Spillman was really annoyed. Uh, I bumped into him uh, and he says oh no one likes a clapped out so I'm just a clapped, clapped out grandmaster now he described himself as a clapped he was pretty pissed off after this, this game playing black against short in one of the British championships It all short did was like classical play with bishop here just classic looking play against fanciful hyper modern stuff but it did the job sometimes this kind of classic set up Against the hyper modern double fin chair, it does the job. Uh, let's see, I can't remember the exact details of the game beyond the opening. Um, funny enough, okay, but e5. I think I, I'm making him succeed. He's su succeeded, he's threatening c4, threatening my bishop. And let's give some square for my bishop, and then there's knight f5 potentially. So what about queen d2? And then I'm dropping e5. This this is not good. Maybe I should just take to start off with. 
This isn't good. I'm going to give my bishop a square. Okay, I'll try this to hold d4. I'd ideally like to blockade the bishop inside the pawn chain with knight d4. Now, knight f5 is a trick to hit my queen. Oh no. Am I giving up both bishops? Rook takes, takes, take. You can take here, rook c1. Where does that knight go? Knight b4. It might be worth a punt. Oh, my rooks attack now. Can I get back into the game here? All right, bishop c6 to d6. Bishop c7 to d6. Yeah, my e5 is vulnerable. All right, if I just take that. And... Uh, no, I haven't achieved anything, have I? Let's try to, if I get g5, that's g4. Maybe g4. Let's try and weaken his pawns a little bit. Knight d4 might be um, something. Alright, so if I do this, I've got knight b5 without losing a rook. Okay, my, at least I'm, I've got some air for the king. Some luft. Now, rook c8. Hmm. Can I take and then knight d6? As long as that's not a killer past pawn. That's forking a rook somewhere and the bishop. And also, I've still got knight e6. So knight d6 is actually my threat here, right? <clears throat> oh, that's good, because he's given me rook c7. Rook c7 is my threat now. This position has improved significantly, I believe. Knight d3, he's just given me rook c7. Alright, thanks for the game. You had a great position there, going great position. I didn't really know. Alright, Sebi, nineteen ninety-six. Sebi, who's two o two one? Let's play this center game. So this is inspired by Shirov, when Shirov did really well at Lloyd's Bat Masters. Winning Lloyd's Bat Masters when he was uh, 18 or something. <clears throat> I've had some fun games with that. There is a technical line which an iron played against me recently involving exchange sack. Quick exchange sack with rookie four. I think you need to know it though. Um, So this was inspired by Steve Wessel, one of my, rest in peace, one of my former club mates. He used to play this. Can I play this just to be able to maybe put my queen on h2? Maybe, maybe this and then queen g2? If 95 queen g2? I just want a castle and maybe like... Oh. Have I done something wrong? Oh, I was expecting knight e5. I should have castled earlier. It depends if he makes a concession like c5. 
this might all make sense after casting for me because d5 might be compromised like with g5 and knight d5 so does he want to move this knight back or support it? It's a bit committal to support the knight in terms of pawn structure. So I think this is interesting now. If I have g5, h4, knight d5. In the meantime, knight e5, queen g3, that sort of thing. f4, f5 might be interesting here. Given he's played bishop e6, maybe g5, f5. g5, h4, f5. I'm curious if his idea is d5. Right. Okay. I'll drive this away from d5. So this gives me the option of knight d5 in the event of b4. I can... Oh, I didn't see that one. Let's not drop e4. Hang on, I can get three pieces for the queen. G takes. Now, the last time I tried three pieces of the queen, I lost horribly. But... Um, it looks okay with knight d5. <laughs> oh, crikey, I'm tempted. I know, last time I, I talked about this and the practicalities of playing in such a way. Sometimes the coordination of pieces is too much to handle. Maybe I should have played cd as an example. Generally, three pieces for the queen should be a bit of fun, right? <clears throat> okay, my center might be collapsing. One snag. C4, knight, d5. My center is about to collapse. Queen, e6, f5. All right, maybe I can kick this knight. It gives my bishop, bishop, b1. Right, so b4, c4, or just wait for this. I'm going to target the g7. <clears throat> One of my favorite videos seems to be Positional Queen Sacrifice by There's Metanov on my King's Crusher channel if you want to check out this. He did a queen sack for two pieces, and he had a magnificent knight on d5. And it drove the attack quite well. It was quite sound in many respects. In other words, I don't think it was totally losing. But um, so there's Bentonov White against Chernikov. Was it Chernikov? I think it was Chernikov. But this is three pieces. Is surely pretty good. If I can double the rooks, I can try and invoke some dark square weaknesses, right? Okay. Try and get this into the attack, this pawn. F5. We'll double the rooks. A4, A3, B3, B takes, Bishop takes, Knight B4. By that stage, knight f6. King moves. I want a rook g6. Do I want f5 or to double the rooks? I think f5 takes and e5 is dangerous, but my this looks dangerous actually. If we swap these knights off, I don't think that's too terrible for me. If he plays knight e5.
and sitting 94, I don't think I mind that. I don't think I mind King H7 necessarily because, well, Knight G5, oh, okay. Can I take here? If I open up this diagonal with E5, there's G7. Uh, A3 might be a concern here. Can I play bishop c4? Now if he takes knight, takes his mate, bishop c4, it's very dangerous, surely. So even if knight takes his mate, Thanks for the game, um, Sebi. Fenneman. Okay, Fenneman. <clears throat> Let's play this again. Shiroff says, I like Shiroff. Hmm. I'm going to just go for this. I like this position very much. Although, probably a four first. Yeah, I have good results in this. Um, generally speaking, although that appears to be a good move. Mm. All right, didn't really want to do that. I think yeah, knight c six. That was a good idea. If I can get bishop c four, knight g five, though. All right, let's try. This and castle queen side. It makes a little bit of sense, I think. Even with f5, I can play g4, g5, maybe. If I would take, then I split the pawns up. And maybe bishop h6, g7, taking on f6. Connect my rooks. He's in the opponent at the moment. So bishop c4 might be good. It might be a target tactically. Knight a5. What about, say, bishop f7 or bishop b3? Even if I gave up that bishop, does it matter? I want to play g5 here. It looks like some sort of minority attack. You can probably do some structural damage to play g5. Now, giving up this bishop for the knight, do I want to do that? To be honest, I don't know. I'm going to risk it. Maybe I should take with the A pawn. So I'm banking on my knights more uh, doing the damage. Okay, let's see. So G5. Exchange of rocks. My immediate threat is rook h8, winning the rook. I think knight d5 and um, looks okay, knight d5 and rook h8. Well, so how is this addressed? King e7, there's knight d5 check. King f7, there's g6 check. Sort of mating that. Right, okay, I'll take care. And hit this pawn. And hit the pawn again. Don't have a pass to F pawn. Try and work on this F pawn. And the E5 pawn is a bit looser now. Work on the 7th. Bishop G5 here. Huh? 
you know, thanks to the game, Fenneman. Um, Duke Crusher. Uh, hi there. Fellow Crusher. I'm ready for this gamut system, which is not accepting. I think I'm going to be boring here and consider taking for bishop b5. Weaken my king. But F four. I'm not taking too many risks. I'm threatening f5. I'm wondering, you can probably just take here and. Yeah, <clears throat> it's double edged stuff. This created a vacuum. But I'm thinking f5 is. I don't know what he does about the bishop necessarily. If I play G five here, just try and make use of the bishop with H four H five later. It's blocked in at the moment. I can maybe support that and my light squares with dropping the bishop back. And can I play this? I get that F four square, that could be good for ninety two to F four. And if he doubles, then I got bishop a3 maybe later. So I've got at least two plans, knight e2 to f4. Okay, bishop here to f3 and h4, h5 supported. Maybe bishop f3, knight e2 to f4, h4, h5. So bishop f3, knight e2 to f4. Bishop moves back, h4. Maybe even king g2, rook h1. It looks like a... Nice position, essentially. Uh, there's always f4 to factor in. Maybe bishop f4 first. Just to make sure f4 is not happening. That liberates the knight, the bishop. So bishop f4 first. Do this very slowly, this plan. Bishop f4, bishop f3, knight e2, king g2. That sort of thing. Okay. Uh, in the meantime... All right. Well, c5 tactically for cd, bishop c5. Tactically, I'm going to get my king away from here. Maybe h2's okay. Or a3 just to strengthen the center. Okay, it's like a. Mm, what is it like? There goes my night plan. <clears throat> Go with this one anyway. So, King G2, Bishop F3, maybe even King G3. Where? If I rook F2, Queen H1. On d5, pushing for h5. Mm. 
Oh, he's gonna. He's gonna play F4, isn't he? <laughs> I'm not keeping a grip on the position, am I? <clears throat> okay. All right. Plan now. Maybe. Oh, H5 and G6 looks good. And he's got Queen G5 potentially coming up. I can just take on G5. Oh, what am I up at? I mean, when I talk about Muppet, I mean me being a Muppet. Okay. I'm going to try and not be mated here now. So, Bishop G4. What a moron I am. Okay. Total moron. <clears throat> okay, I've got a G file. There's up, upsides to this. There's a G file. There's also Rook G4. Oh, now there's Bishop F5. Right, I think he had Bishop H. Things are going too quick. I'm moving too quick. He's moving too quick. We're both moving too quick. There's opportunities to be missed at every move, I think. If I can play Rook takes F4. Knight takes C2, Rook G1. How is this position? It looks as though I've got loose bishops everywhere. Uh, okay. If I play bishop d1, knight takes, or bishop g4, maybe bishop g4. Threatens Bishop F five. Now there's potentially E six. Let's get this bishop out of harm's way. And it's double hair, that's a nice pin. Six is possible because it takes rook takes or just bishop takes. I seem to have got some coordination. E5. Protect this guy for a moment. Double the rooks with this. Is he queening? Yeah, that got a bit chaotic. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, 
uh yeah nothing my plans were just too long in the future the immediate stuff was just always more important hmm I've got a plan here at the opening. Bishop d3 and knight e2 is my plan. To try and avoid the pins and stuff. The pin. So knight e2. Because otherwise this d4 can be annoying. There's pressure on d4. Knight. <clears throat> Tempted with a d5. I'll play it. See what happens. I can lose the bishop. Hang on. No, no, no. It's queen a4 check. Uh, this splits the opponent's pawns. I think I'm happy with that structure. I shouldn't have done that as a pre move. I could play bishop g4 there. That would be embarrassing to lose the queen. Uh, that was a naughty pre move I've just played. It's not the casting. Bishop g7 threatens. But also, maybe Queen F3 taking on F6. G4. If there's no Bishop G5, it's pinned. Knight F6, Bishop G7, Bishop G4, F3. I can try this. So, yeah, <clears throat> knight, knight g, uh, bishop g four f three. Um, So I'm not sure how okay black plays now right So now, um, okay, thanks for the game, Tully. Lorena. <clears throat> so, um, Lorena. Okay, uh might have to bought this one. I'll challenge me later if you want. Game of pawns. Just wanna make sure it's all 
premium members. There's one from non-premium decline there. Okay. I'll play this sensor game again because it's a bit of fun. Something different, fresh, like original. The variety is the spice of life. I'm sure you don't want to see endless Roy Lopez, you know, whatever. Berlin variation. <clears throat> Don't expect th expect this to be appearing in any World Chess Championship in the future, though. This line. I've had this position. Isn't that 95? I've had this position before. Queen d4. Now, on Queen d4, I've got some options. I can play well Queen D4 is my concern because I don't want to drop E4 necessarily so Queen D4 if I consider Bishop D3 well I just go into this line here Knight C7 King moves, knight takes, queen takes e4, maybe bishop e2, knight d4. What's happening here? Intriguing. That line had a concern with knight d4 actually because it was c2. It had a big concern to it. Now here, it um, looks okay. More than okay. <clears throat> What is my plan now? I'm just going to trap my bishop. It's not very nice. Try and give the bishop a square. Okay, what about knight d4? Is that an idea? Knight d4. Then knight f5. Or. Knight takes f6. I don't know, Rook f8, what's happening there? Is there a bit of dreaded counterplaying or something? Oh, I can fix these pawns. Now, knight d4 threatens knight e6. So I'm threatening knight e6. Now knight d4 Alright, let's simplify maybe by taking on c6 just to simplify and simplify again in fact this is winning a piece isn't it king's overloaded king takes knight takes if bishop takes well there's rook e1 Thanks for the game, Game of Pawns. Dracanti. <clears throat> I'll play this Gambit system, which I've had some success in. Oh, I'll try and make it a Gambit again. Nope. There's no gambits on the cards here. Yeah. 
Game business. However, this looks like a position where we're heading into a potentially a, a Greek gift. Because there's no defensive knight on f3. So h2 is be more sensitive later. So there might be bishop d6. h5, bishop h2. Greek gift is to be feared. <clears throat> Potentially. Is it better to take that? If I don't, my pawns are wrecked. Right. I'll take it for a moment. So I want to play h5 if he cancels. Or even bishop, maybe bishop takes like g4. Maybe it works there. Okay. So I'm free the bishop or something. Does he want me to castle before he castles? I could try and castle to try and tempt him to castle. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. B3, if I castle, he's got bishop b2. I'm castling. I'm castling. Uh huh. Putting these pawns forward. D4 might be threatened. I can win a pawn at some cost. You can play bishop takes. Bishop takes. This, this king's not castled yet. The dark squares might be vulnerable. Yeah, I think I might have to shut the window. Actually, I'm afraid. Uh, I, if that's, I don't know if that music carries on. <laughs> it wasn't intended. Um, barbecue music or something. <laughs> Stop for some reason, which is good. I've got this rook switch, haven't I? As well. Well, I know Tarish did a double bishop sack against Nimzovich. I covered that game recently. But I'm not sure it's working too well here. <clears throat> if I'm getting another bishop. Okay, thanks for the game, Dracanti. Uh, okay, Olaf. Um, let's see. Play ninety five. I'll do this first. Try and grab the light square bishop. It gives me um F four. It's pretty quick, isn't he? Mm. 
Maybe I put the bishop on b1 here. That means he can't use so easily e5 if I play um oh, let's take some b4. I can pin that first to avoid knight d5. I don't like losing center pawns sometimes. When you lose center pawns, you lose sometimes central control. Okay, um, d6, trying to unbind. The c6 kind of winning. Material. Because rook takes, there's queen takes. If rook takes, I'm not getting back where the queen takes. But if knight takes, c takes, and if he takes my queen, I take his rook. So I think c6 wins material. So let's run this through again. Knight take. Oh, thanks for the game, Alaf. Molly, Alloy. Take e4. It's not round. Maybe challenge later. Oh well. Uh, okay. Thingy. Uh, <laughs> can't pronounce your name. C Y U F U two U. C F for two. I don't know. Is this guy around? Is anyone around? <laughs> Come on, guys. I think there's a tick box. If you want to challenge me, there's a tick box to automatically create game. I've heard. I haven't tried it myself. I, I keep hearing about some tick box. Maybe they changed the software since. I don't know. <clears throat> Underrated FM? Has it just started? That's right. That's unusual. Wow, I didn't expect that. Maybe it's a novelty or something. I, I don't know, but it means I can get my center entrenched. I was more worried about lines that get blown up in the center. You know, there's ways of blowing up the white center quite quick, um, quite quickly. Maybe I should have considered F5. It's not too late. Now, is it stronger to take and the knight f4 or just knight f4? That's an intriguing question. 
question. You see, the thing is, if I take and the knight of who's got knight f8 as an example, and I've still got the option. If you play, if I played on move order knight f4, knight f8, I still got the option of f6. So I'm wondering to play knight f4 here. Not that f6 does anything. Hmm. And if I just play this in rook b1, should I keep the queens on? <clears throat> I can take it here first, I think. The knight's holding the queen. Now if I took here, or rook b1 he takes, takes, uh, rooks come off, rook b7 hits a7, d7, so in that respect, I'll play this. Okay. some air for my king. Maybe king g3. Strengthen. I'm wondering what he's doing. He's not doing much, is he? I do this. Try and fix a pawn on g5. If I can fix a pawn on g5. Sorry about that. I, yeah, that was an interesting game. Uh, so sim, sim Lee, I have to put an extra at least ten minutes to cope with that. Um, sorry about that. At least ten minutes. Make a note. Ten minutes. <laughs> okay. I, ho I hope you guys are still around. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, It's similarly around. I hope you guys are still around. Sorry, I have to just have to wait for my connection to come back. Sometimes it's been a bit temperamental uh, recently. Um, uh, 
Okay. Uh, Simply still around. All right. That's important. I go into that challenge. Uh, okay, Putrov. <clears throat> oh, we didn't play a uh, London system, huh? I'm trying to I know, isolate his pawns. I'm thinking E5 is uh, interesting. To try and sort of break open the diagonal. <clears throat> See, so if he took knight g4 with a vengeance <laughs> to get the pawn back, I kind of isolated this pawn, kind of potentially extended the bishop. A bit fragmentational. Okay, so knight e5. It looks like play b5 here. There's rook a3 on knight. B6. Okay, you can take on B5, but you can also take on C8. But I still think this is interesting. Um, all right, if I take on C3, I don't think this is going anywhere. So I think I need to take on c3 first as priority because c4 could happen. But here, I, e6 can't so easily. I can just probably just take it. Well, there's knight d5. If I go here. So I want to play knight takes e5, I think. And um, well, take it from there. It looks as though I've sort of done the damage structurally at least, uh, and I liberated the bishop. Um, by the way, is is the volume okay? Did everything remain intact? Like volume okay? Sorry about that disconnection. Oh yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> mm. well, I'm still hoping to get my pawn back with a little bit of interest. Hmm. But he's got f7 actually. I'm gonna watch out for f7. What if I took the bishop instead? That would hold F7. So I'm on the rook there. The knight's not bad, I think. So it takes, takes knight g5, king g7. 
Got past sea pawn here as well. So ninety five king g seven. Knight f three, have I got anything special there? Hmm. I'll do you, I'll do this. I'm not sure. What if I stop knight g five? If I played h6, is that crazy? Because I'm thinking that knight g5 is a pain. And he's got rook c5. Can I stop rook c5 as well? I'm going to maintain my knight. I, I want to get to grips with this position with king g7. Double the rocks around about here. Let's assume. Is G five possible? Let's check. I can see that check. That's a shame. So it's trying to make me. It's not very nice. If I take. There might be a, an escape square over here. Can I take on H3? If I can take on H3, I'll avoid getting mated. Pin. All right now, have I got King G free here? All right, thanks, thanks for the game, uh, Putrov. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Goku. Uh -uh. Let's play King's Engine. C five. 
This is a gambit, which he's not accepting. Um. <clears throat> I want him to play d5, knight e5, it's a bit fun. Right now, fun begins, I hope. We have uh, b5. Gambit unsound. Uh, yeah, why did this occur to me? It's interesting. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I can threaten something here. Bishop takes, rook takes. Also, knight takes is useful for getting the e5 square. F6 or knight takes. F6 seems to trap the bishop. <clears throat> mm. The thing is, am I getting hacked to death? What the FG? Maybe there's bishop d4. And the opponent's disconnected. He's got a lovely internet light here. <clears throat> okay, um. Knight f6 gives me rook b2 and knight e4 almost. It's knight e4. So I'm, I might be getting hacked to death on, on the h file. Knight f6 takes knight g4. Looks dangerous for both sides. I hope. <clears throat> Rook f2 springs the mines. Bishop d4 just to keep the dark square bishop. I mean, bishop d4, g7, rook f2, king d3. It, it looks dangerous to play this. If he castles bishop e3, I'm threatening maybe rook f2 and rook b2. As long as I don't get mated too quickly, this should be fun. Rook f2, king d, queen d3, rook takes b2, also gives me queen a5, puncturing the c3, knight support, rook f2, primary threat, maybe. The check, I don't think that's, that's great. Let's think. G7, rook f2, queen d3. Rook b2, queen h3. I'm not sure how he gets the attack. Um, 
going oh maybe there's a knight f6 and queen h8 after right so this sort of thing queen d3 to h3 <sighs> i need to play in such a way i'm not getting murdered what's this if i take i have queen e7 for h7 why can't i just take that h6 is covered by the knight there's bishop e3 here I don't want him to double the rooks necessarily. Is there a safe way of playing this? The knight covers h6, and so in other words, knight g4, rook h3. I can keep h3 covered with knight g2 though, keep things more simple. Forget this doubling of rooks. I'm playing FG, not F4. Can I keep things simple? Not F4, it takes G6. Check, check. Mm. King f7, if you please check king e8. <clears throat> I'm going to speed up a bit. to attack before I get mated here. <clears throat> Queen E3. Mm. Okay, it's getting a bit scary. <laughs> queen down. Uh, queen up. It was getting a bit scary. Ugh. Yeah, I could just see ninety four, ninety six, and that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> that would be really cruel. I just had to get my queen. The queen is the top scorer in chess. It's worth remembering that. If you like football, the queen is the top scorer. So try and work out theoretical vulnerabilities first. Then see how your top scorer can handle the situation. The queen, b6, e3. It's the top scorer. It's worth having the queen bouncing along diagonals. Uh, okay. It's worth being a queen up. Okay, I'm going to abort this and uh, go on to the next one. Okay, banana monkey. Um, banana is good for potassium, actually. I see a lot of GMs having bananas. Uh, 
All right, anyway. Oh, okay. We'll play D4 hat. Mm. Maximum two a day, I'd recommend, personally. Unless you're a tennis player or something. I think they're good for the muscles and stuff. I don't know. Check it out. But I, I've definitely seen grandmasters have bananas. I've seen monkeys at Gibraltar. Gibraltar is good for monkeys. If you want a chess tournament with monkeys, go to Gibraltar. Uh -huh. Lauren de Costa was telling me a tale. He he uh, got mauled by a uh, monkey on the way to a game, and he lost the game. Funny enough, in Gibraltar. But it's a good tourist attraction. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, he said to me, "But all people see is the score sheet in the database. After they don't have the full story on it, that it was attacked before the game. Uh, so uh, that's all you get." Queen e2 to f3. What about? Let's see. Uh, is this becoming highly uncomfortable or something? Was it my imagination? What, knight d5. Queen e5, you can threaten mate. If I play G3, he's got G5. I'm just going to be winning H3 later. If I played 92, Queen E5, I've got Bishop F4, I think. Maybe 92 is the best of the lot. Just lose C3. Rook B1, Bishop B2 after on that diagonal. There's weaknesses. Well, it's protecting C3 anyway. Alright, let's try this. So with Queen E5, I'm ready to answer with Bishop F4. Can I play here, Bishop D2? I'm wondering, my idea is to relieve the Knight of Duty to play Knight G3. If he wants to undouble my pawns, he's welcome to. Hmm. Maybe I should. I get a tempo. There's an idea maybe bishop e3 to d4. So knight c4, bishop d4, another tempo. Force off the queens. So I'm double my pawns. Knight e3, there's rook f2. I'll play here then in this case. Get this rook into action as knight d2. Maybe f5 is more worth playing. <clears throat> He's got rook g3 and knight e4. If 
Let me avoid that. So Rook F2 was a victim to that. All right, can dissolve some pawns here. Rook D2 to keep my second rank intact. King G3 to F3. Try and activate the king. Or not. C4 for D5, a pass pawn. Might be worth trying to create. Or A5, A6 to try and damage the pawn structure. Both. There's rook b2 here. Rook e7. Alright, so a6, rook a2, rook c4, rook a6, rook d4, rook a7. I remember playing a6. Alright, pass pawn outside, pass pawn here. Potentially, we could suppress it with g5 though. I just dropped a pawn, haven't I? Ouch. Ah. Maybe there was rook a6 there anyway. Okay, that's fine. There's Maybe there's rook a6 if he takes that guy. Not here though. Can I go for rook g4? this ouch Checks. What's this pawn forward? Force the pawn forward, then go for the checks. So I'm hoping this is a drawing position. I'm going to offer a draw. Yeah, well played. Very well played. Did we play money on the? We didn't get a game. <sighs> Is okay. Molly, Ollie, Molly, Alloy. Um, I don't know. Okay, it's French defense, knight c6. Generally, if you can get the pawn to commit, then you go round the back with the checks. It's one of the first things. International Master Andrew Martin, he once gave me a coaching session, he emphasised that actually, basics of rook and pawn endings. I remember that. He was saying, you don't want to have a long game where 
you can't draw that um, when you should be able to and it's like textbook position <laughs> so yeah it's an infinite check scenario um, if you can get the pawn committed Bishops off. Wonder if, um, I don't want to improve his position. If I had taken that, I think I'm sort of improving his position in a very uncomfortable manner. I can't do anything about e6, probably, if I'd taken the bishop. So, uh, to take is a mistake sometimes. Um, all right. Can I do knight f8 to try and handle this e6 business? So, knight f4. On knight f4 there might be bishop takes and if knight takes there might be knight takes okay if i play knight g6 here it's sort of looking i don't know um dangerous for me but I don't know if that knight should be on f8 or smash my pawns to smithereens and it's probably not very healthy taking taking my uh, f4 can I play f5 here is that crazy just taken and take on e6. Right, what about knight f8? f5, bishop d7, f6, g6. G mm, shaky. Although I remember this game of Adams against Peter Large, where Peter Large had this f5, but later was weak on the on the dark squares. This might be an analogous example where I ho I'm hoping the opponent will then get mated on g7 if I'm not careful. <laughs> If he took with the rook, is it worth thinking about g takes? I don't want his queen coming to h6 particularly. Um, g6, knight f4. Mm. 
I don't think I'm getting hacked to death. Unfortunately. <clears throat> Maybe the path of maximum resistance. I'm trying. I'm just getting hacked to death here. Takes, takes. Doesn't look very appetizing at all. Mm, let's get, I'm just being hacked. Queen F6 here is not mate, is it? Oh, it is mate. Oh. Alright, I was wrong. Yeah, I thought I was getting hacked to death there, and I was getting hacked to death. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> That's how it happens sometimes. <clears throat> For a glimmer of a moment, I thought he'd made some mistake there, but uh, the position was way too strong. If I played B5, sort of, uh, or E5. B5, he can kind of just win a pawn. E5 is also not entirely appetizing. However, D6 is protected. Uh, so if I can get to play H6 and Knight C7, and in the long run, arrange. <coughs> Okay, that's changed everything. Uh, I thought F5 was a long way to prepare. Um, Queen E7, Bishop D4. Okay, I still think Queen E7 might be okay. Uh huh. All right. Um. Bit passive. B5 again is ruled out. Uh, D6 is a bit vulnerable. I'm not really sure. Okay, I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I guess I can try this horrible move. Uh, I don't know, they're all horrible. B5, C takes, it's horrible. Uh, I'll choose the lesser evil, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> It's all not looking glamorous at the moment. Okay. Bishop G5, Bishop F6, maybe. So maybe H4 is, is useful. 
something. Nice H1, H3. Okay. Form pawn. Provoke F4. Doesn't think. Oh, maybe not. Ah, hang on, hang on. There's knight C6 to D4. Uh, Knight C6 to D4 on F4. This could be really handy. Uh, F4, Knight C. Yeah, I like that. I've got that. So, you know, so yeah, this C6. I didn't think of that before. Okay, so Knight C6 to D4. Of course, that makes sense. Improving the Knight. I think a lot of my worries seem over if I have Knight D4. You could take on h3 for sure. That's fine in a way if he wants to do that because I think, uh, well, actually, I'm only threatening knight b3. It's a technicality, really. I don't really want to lose my knight. Think knight takes h3 actually does mean knight g5. <laughs> All right, so bishop d1. Okay, I think this protects h3. I oh, know it concession is knight d5, maybe just queen d8. Essentially, this is knight f3 tactic if the bishop wasn't protecting f3. Hmm. Okay, let's run through this. Knight d5, queen d8. What does white do here? Um, actually, now that's kind of weakness to the last move, actually, in terms of b5. So I can play b5 here. Except there's a takes that holds the pawn. Okay. Uh, C pawn might be safer because e5 would open up that diagonal. Safer for my king anyway, probably. Probably want to. Mm, mm, remove this knight, then play b5. So bishop e6 taking b5. Even if he wins a pawn, um, well, it depends if he takes this way and not opening up the b file. Aren't I threatening something here? With taking. And bishop h6. No, that knight's pretty awesome actually. Uh, and it's also got queen d4. Let's just put this back for a moment. I don't want to lose d4. This is falling to bits. <laughs> this game. Okay, it's funny. Alright, can I just get rid of this knight because I hate it? Ah. Oh. I hate this knight on d5 now. Go away, knight on d5. All right, in fact, it was a very good position, obviously, for cats for a, for a large percentage of the game. Um, Johan. Uh, I did have a French defence last week, I think, which was okay, as far as I recall, in the knight c6 French. I wonder if we can have a further debate on that. Yeah. Yeah, this might be free business. Oh, 
I wasn't totally convinced with the bishop c6 plan. I have knight b8 if he wants this plan again. Um, ah, that's different, isn't it? There's knight b8 here. The pattern of last week's game, what was it about? It's not that relevant anyway. Let's analyze this position. Okay. I'm going to castle. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take her. Try and relieve the position a bit. Let me see five knight c6. He's not the Greek gift me, is he? And for my bishops having uh, controlling East g5, I'm hoping not to get hacked to death with a Greek gift. So let's see. I can put the bishop back on e7. All right, I can play this. Don't mind that necessarily. Knight takes, or rook takes, queen takes, knight e5, queen e2. Okay, this bishop's bad for a while. Knight d4. Knight d4, bishop c5, knight e6, though. Okay, uh, let's get it out over here. Bishop g6. So that gives me bishop e4. Some sort of compensation. Bishop's not quite a good piece all of a sudden. Oh, he's forcing it to go away. Okay. e6 is a problem. I'm just wondering, uh, I could take with a pawn actually, queen e6, a5 and double rooks behind this a5 business, but he's got b5 now, bishop c5 and knight f5. Oh, what's, what's happening here? Anyway, if I repeated, would it would he actually repeat? Let me find a bit worrying. Um, <clears throat> get ready for. G five is that a move? Is my king getting too weak here? Yeah. Big G four because if he takes Rook G eight. Celebrating the bishop a bit, let's move. So rook g8 uh, coming up anyway. And then this one, stop f5. No, hang on, I'll lose a6. Uh -oh. Don't want to lose a6. Again, I'm kind of defending that now. Because of rook g8. So a6 is a liability. There's bishop h4 here. That might be good news. I'm hoping it's good news and not just token exchange. 
when in the exchange rook g4 bishop f2 king takes rook takes queen takes rook g8 I f Actually, I'm concerned he's going to let f5 rip open this diagonal to shreds. Uh, I want to keep a blockade on things. And that's not happening after my last move. That was really clever, wasn't it? Can I see this? As I might take this and suffer e6. Which is not the case necessarily uh, as the best course of action. Um, uh, not nice. Do I have to do this horrible move? Protect H6. You can create a battery there on H6 potentially. So there's Knight F4. There's rook h6. I'm going to do that in advance. If I get my king over here now, or h4. Maybe for h3. Bishop f5 for d4 would, would be handy in some respects for queen d7, rook d1, bishop f3. So d4, bishop d4, queen d7. There's not check there, right? d3. For rook h1, rook h1 here, oh I got a bit lucky there, that was so much pressure, I knew that f5 was bad bad news for me, even though it's exchanged down, that was bad bad news for my position that f5, because he had that beautiful dark square bishop unchallenged. Ah, that was okay. I might make this the last game today. I hope you all enjoyed it to some extent. Uh, you know, one fun tambouring if you want to vote, one fun tambouring. Uh, this will be the last game, I think. Um, <clears throat>
Hmm. Is this the reverse Siberian trap or something? Uh, the dreaded reverse Siberian trap um, against the reverse Morris Smith, Smith Morrow gambit. Um, Now, normally, if I was playing white, I'd play for knight d4 with white, i.e. I, knight d5 with white, knight d4 with black. So, rook c8 and something like knight d4 later. Um, okay. Castling, rook c8 and knight d4. To try and use the e file in reverse. If this is a Smith Morrow gambit in reverse, that's the sort of thing I do. If he's not going to castle. So rook c8, knight d4. Okay. Rook c8, knight d4. The show's meant to be an hour and a half, technically. Um, but I had that disconnection, so I'm counting like 10 minutes and stuff. Uh, it's in Castle Queenside, right? Is he, is he casting Queenside? Now I'm really tempted for this knight d4 business. Oh, he didn't use a piece there. I play b5, bishop d3, bishop e6, queen move somewhere. But where? Back to d1, d takes, d takes, protecting the bishop. Okay, okay, let's think about this. Bishop sort of, you'd think that theoretically as a loose piece here. Just need some magical forcing moves to see if. That's possible to do anything with that. But unfortunately, bishop e6, there's queen d1. I'll do it anyway. Queen d1 then. Right. Now this pawn's loose. If I take yeah, just to extend the scope of the bishop, theoretically. Okay, I think it's fine, unfortunately, so I'll do this. Maybe for rook d8, at least. Some sort of issue there, maybe. Rook F D eight. Maybe not. Okay, Bishop D five. I mean Bishop C four. Trying to get past pawn. Knight F five Queen E six. Ok, 
Okay, I'm protecting that pawn at the moment. Knight e4 here, knight f5 though. Knight d5 might be a more stable approach. There's knight f5. Alright, what about g6? Oh, crikey. What about if I just take and then queen e4? I don't think I've got anything particularly interesting. Uh, unless rook c4, is that to try and create a pass pawn? Is that possible? Which could be tricky to hand handle. Oh. Just lost material. I was not. Let's check. I just blundered the rock. Yeah, that's gone. That's uh, totally gone. Try this. Maybe maybe there's it's mostly gone. I love playing a rook down. Under the other rope as well. I think that's time to resign. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Been a tough week. Uh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, well played. See you next week then. Uh, all right. <laughs> Cheers then. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.